What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the Tavern. Glad to have you here. It's been a long day at the office, and I am super happy to be back in the mock draft streets. Let's go. Uh, tonight, I'm going to record a... Uh, I actually got another show with my good friend Phil Ruskin of the Extra Point FFB coming up here in just a couple of hours. So I want to sit, uh, get in a, a quick mock draft, uh, do a little bit of warm up. And so uh, let's get it going. Uh, we are going to do a 12 team PPR redraft, doing a lot of dynasty. Let's get him back into redraft. Uh, single quarterback. We're doing a three wide receiver, two flex and uh, everything else pretty standard. So uh, let's get it. CD lamb over McCaffrey to start the draft. Uh, I'm more of a CMC at 101, but I, I definitely understand uh, flipping exposures, and this is a mock draft. So if I were at the 101, I would want to try some CD Lamb builds, see what I want. So good place to test that out. Everything's pretty chalky. Uh, here, I just have the decision of if I want to start with wide receiver or if I want to go and rip Bijan Robinson. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with JJ. I've been doing a lot of Bijan Hero RB builds. I think it's my preferred build where I might actually take uh, I might actually start reaching for Brees and Bijan by like a pick or two. And so it'll be interesting. I've been actually taking Bijan at the 105 just because I very much like the opportunity and options it provides later in the draft. I like a lot of pockets of wide receivers where I like the wide receivers significantly more than I like the running backs when they're in similar ADP. And in general, there's just not a ton of running backs that I'm really excited about. And the guys that I like, everyone else seems to be in on. And so I'm not getting incredible value at the running back position where I might have otherwise felt at least a couple of players that I know I like late and not everyone does. So because of that, this year, I'm leaning a little bit more towards a hero RB build reaching a little bit earlier so that the draft falls in, in a better way for, for what I want my lineup to be. So that's just my take on the first round with Bijan and Brees. Uh, love Gibbs at the turn too. Yep, was thinking he would go there. Not sure I would double tap with Taylor. I pulled off a mock draft earlier. You can check out on the channel where I did. I think I did exactly Gibbs Taylor. No, it was. Uh, it might have been Gibbs Barkley or something along those lines. Definitely had Saquon in round two though. And uh, I actually liked the way that draft turned out. It was a nightmare until it wasn't though. Because I ended up saying I was going to basically take seven wide receivers in a row. And then I took Josh Allen and paired him with Kincaid and then had to take like five wide receivers. Like after round five, it was kind of gross, but it worked out. Okay. Uh, looking at the board. So Bijan went where I think he would. Everything's pretty chalk. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall is kind of interesting. I like Brees a little bit more. Love Garrett Wilson. There's just a few question marks. And I think Brees uh, ends up dominating in that offense, at least a little bit of a safer pick than Garrett Wilson. Very close. I do like Wilson over Puka and AJB, though. I think that played out nicely. Marvin Harrison before Devontae Adams. Bold. Interesting. I don't love it, but I, it's also kind of a fun, spicy pick. Uh, ETN, Jacobs, and we are back on the clock. Round two. So we're looking at Kyron for RB. We could reach for Devin Achen if we really want to. Or at wide receiver, we're looking at Chris Olave, Ayuk, and that's pretty much it. So for me, I'm much higher on Olave than Ayuk. Uh, this one's close for me. I haven't taken a ton of Olave, but I really, I I'm starting to be a little bit heavier on Olave. Um, I think people are a little bit down on him unfairly. He had not great touchdown luck. Uh, I, I think the offense is still going to be frustrating at times. But I do think just a, I think he got very unlucky in many spots uh, last year. And I watched plenty of them because I own Olave. And I, there were just so many red zone opportunities where there was weird Taysom Hill stuff. Um, there was a ridiculous amount of targets going to the running back that didn't need to. If Kamara, yeah, and we kind of saw that Kamara definitely looked like less of a version of himself. I think Olave stands to benefit the most from anybody that has a slight decline in what they have going on. Well, except for Carr. If Carr declines a little bit more, and there's not much more he can decline to, but if he does, not great for Olave. But I'd like to think quarterbacks, as they get older, as they get into their their golden uh, days, so to speak, where they don't have much time left, I think they tend to hyper-target 
the most impactful, most talented player on the field and just ride and die with it. And I think that's what Carr is going to do with Olave. And he's going to take some deep shots because um, he's got the speedster on the team in, in um, Shahid, but still, I think he's going to hyper target Olave. Kyron goes afterwards, you know, then Ayuk. Um, it's interesting that Devin HN didn't go. Yeah, I was going to say, if he gets back to me, this is the actual live in the dream. Keep in mind, we're through two rounds. No running backs. Has me nervous because I don't really like the round three running backs after HN goes. Um, so that's something interesting to consider when I'm looking at a lobby versus a running back is in third round here. Um, I like Laporta. I like Allen. I don't love them. I like the later quarterbacks this year and i don't want to be the first one to take a tight end i just like other positions better the problem is i have to go down the board and so now i'm looking at dj Moore versus just locked and load sam laporta i want to know what going dj Moore here looks like and see if i can sweep up value a little bit later on this is typically how i would do a draft and um yeah we're gonna lean into kind of what i was doing Maybe not necessarily last year, but a little bit last year. Definitely the year before last year, where I was much, I was leaning into super zero RB, but I wanted to go hero, but definitely hammering wide receivers early. So we'll see. Well, uh, chat, let me know in the comments what you think here. If you would have gone with Josh Allen or Sam Laporta here instead of DJ Moore. So let's do a little bit of, uh, we'll do a bit of a two and two later on and see how that goes. Um, so noticeably, not taking Allen here means we uh we obviously we're, we'd still take uh, an unstacked Kincaid. We don't we can take Kincaid without taking Allen. Um, Laporta actually would have been okay because I think Goff is a, a great target for me in non in in, uh, in redraft. Um, something to consider when it comes to Laporta early is are you willing to reach around? <laughs> yeah, that's um. Didn't see that one coming. Are you willing to reach one full round? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I've not had nearly enough uh, to drink for that to be full on LOL. But there you go. Saying reach round on stream. Um, if you're willing to just make sure you go get your guy. One of the guys I want to go get is Goff. He 75 plus percent of his games this year are going to be in a dome. And I mean, that's every quarterback's dream. He has such a fantastic schedule later in the season when some quarterbacks are going to face some interesting weather and he's still throwing in a dome or he's comfortable with his ridiculous offense. So the Laporta golf stack, I, I guess I'm just not, I just don't love taking a tight end in the third round. I've never been that guy. I've always been a, I feel like when you take Laporta at three, seven, you're completely killing any opportunity for you to take a tight end later in ADP and have it pay off and be a value. Like Laporta has to be the tight end one and also has to even like has to be better than he was last year for this to be like a net positive pick. And while I think he's so safe that basically taking Laporta in the third round means if you just do a very, very solid across the board draft, zero mistakes, really no busts at your major positions, Laporta is a ridiculously stabilizing force an advantage. So if you think you're so good this year with finding pockets of value at running back and wide receiver, go ahead and do this. Um, if you don't have that completely figured out yet, I don't recommend this because um, it's going to put you in a little bit, bit of a box uh, later on. So that's just my take on Laporta. I like DJ Moore. I think he's fallen in ADP a little bit too much. I still think that that offense is going to see more targets than it's had in a while, more catchable targets than it's had in a while. I think DJ Moore is still very much the alpha wide receiver one, but he'll face, it's going to be very hard to double him. Um, I think there's going to be significantly less check downs for sure. I think when they're going to run, they're going to run. I, I mean, I do think they're going to throw the ball to Swift, right? But at the same time, I think that is going to be, you know, what happens when the play breaks down. I don't think there's going to be a, a ridiculous target volume there. The whole point is I think DJ Moore actually stands to benefit a lot from the overall offensive ecosystem and quarterback play getting a lot better. I think he's the main guy that's going to uh, stand to benefit. Love Keenan Allen, but when players change teams, I think historically it's been not great. We're having a little bit of a pocket of, oh, it's worked out just in recency bias. The last couple of players that have changed teams historically, I don't know if that's going to stick around. 
Um, so this is interesting here. Uh, Jalen Hurts in the late fourth is kind of insane. I don't usually see him fall this far, and I don't think I can't take him here. Like, I have to take him here. I love Anthony Richardson in the fourth. Like, I really love him there in the fourth. And this is unstacked. Uh, but I just... Well, I guess we're going with Trey McBride. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> all right, curveball. I was talking too much, and uh, we we auto picked uh, Trey McBride. So we're going with uh, with the Trey McBride. Would have taken Hertz there. I think the four eight for Hertz is kind of insane, um, and I would have absolutely taken him over McBride by a lot. That being said, I'm not unhappy with McBride here, and I like the later quarterbacks a lot. So it's not the worst thing in the world to take McBride here. This this could have been an absolute coin flip. And let's say Hertz was just magically off the board and it was McBride, Lamar, CJ. I'm not a Lamar hater. I'm just not super on Lamar. And that would have been interesting. I would have been looking at McBride, Andrews, Kincaid, most likely anyways. Just a little bit too soon for Walker was hoping he'd come back. So again, it would have been between Hertz and McBride anyway is the point. Um, a lot of guys we like went off. We wanted Pickens. We wanted Walker. We're zero RB. Uh, we do have a tight end one Z again. We love all the late quarterbacks. So we can literally make quarterback the last pick in our draft. Keep in mind, we have DJ Morris. So we can stack with Caleb Williams, who will go extremely late. Um, otherwise no one really to stack with. Uh, so now we're in the fifth round and I said, I was kind of like off Lamar, but Am I really going to take Anthony Richardson over Lamar is the question. I think that's a little bit too bold, just knowing the weapons and what Lamar did last year. Um, yeah, we're going to go Lamar here. In Dynasty, I'm taking Richardson ahead of Lamar straight up. Um, this is really tough for me, Lamar 5-5, five, five, because I would have loved to pair him with Andrews and Flowers, and that's absolutely not going to happen. So we're probably going to go with a mostly unstacked Lamar here. Um, Maybe we get a shot of Bateman or Devontae Walker hyper late and see how that goes. Um, but not unhappy to get Lamar Jackson in the fifth. We're, we're not unhappy with it. It's just funny how we were talking about loving late quarterbacks and we ended up taking a quarterback immediately, but didn't think Hurts would be a value. Didn't think Lamar would be a value, but there you have it. Look at the lobby though. Lots of people made picks where they definitely could have gone one way or another, I mean, we took Mixon, Kamara, and Walker over Lamar Jackson, so this is definitely a, a lobby that wants to push quarterback late. And I think you'll find that generally in mock drafts, quarterbacks go a little bit later than they otherwise would in a real draft, where the I think tight ends and quarterbacks tend to go higher. Yeah, this is crazy, man. I mean, Anthony Richardson goes 6-1. I think that is super late for Richardson. But it depends on your scoring format, too. Full PPR. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to elevate some other positions just a touch. So I could see that. Um, I, I think Richardson absolutely goes in. in the, the, the weird thing about Richardson is at the 5-5, five, five, I don't think when the real when when actual draft time comes around, I can plan on him at the five five often. I think he's going to get steamed up and steamed up. So I think he's probably going to end up maybe not four or five turn, but I can see him like early fifth, kind of five one through through five four. I mean maybe five five. I just I don't think he ever gets to five six in a real draft very often. Let's go back to the board though. After I <laughs> auto picked McBride, Hertz goes. Kincaid went right after. I think that's oh, it's fair. McBride and Kincaid usually go like late fourth early fifth. Sometimes McBride goes a little bit earlier. We got T Higgins, George Pickens, Amari Cooper. For the record, I like Pickens more than both of these. I think he has the best week to week upside. Great role. Going to be an upgraded quarterback. Should be a condensed target system where they might even kind of function like a two wide receiver uh, offense that heavily uses uh tight end is why I like Friar Muth this year. So Pickens, great pick there. Um, Higgins and Cooper, I'm a little bit farther down them, but I think they're fine there. Walker, Kamara, Mixon. Noticeably, I would definitely take Mixon over Kamara. It's not particularly close for me. Um, Mixon going into an already amazing offense that had good running back production from not great running backs last year. Kamara, I just see the arrows pointing down. I don't see the ceiling for Kamara. I see a floor play, not a ceiling, where it used to be a ceiling play. Um, 
you know, he could be not great at the end of the year. If it's not a playoff team, he could be phased out. He could lose a lot of early down work and just purely be a pass catcher that also loses some goal line. Um, the totality of outcomes for Kamara for me is just not good enough to take him anywhere in the fifth round. I would take the entire fifth round over Kamara, most likely. Back on the clock here, we still don't have a single running back. We should probably take one soon. Uh, I already have DJ Moore, so this is kind of tough that DeAndre Swift is the next best back, but what am I going to do? I think I might have to take him. I actually kind of like the Chicago offense. I just really don't want to take him there. If I don't take him, I'm going Aaron Jones in Minnesota. Don't have many shares of him, but Aaron Jones, Jefferson, I could bet on a pretty big Minnesota. I'm going to go Aaron Jones there. Um, we're going to get a little bit weird here. It's just crazy. Um, I, I don't know if you, you guys have ever run this to you. So I took Jefferson and then I have more in the third. The running backs I'm looking at are a Minnesota running back and Chicago running back. And there's a chance that Swift comes back with how RB heavy these guys are. I don't think he will, but he certainly could. Um, and that would be interesting from a real league standpoint. This kind of would be a nightmare because my RB one and my wide receiver one are out in the same week. and my wide receiver three, which would be a lot of people's wide receiver twos and my potentially RB two also the same bye week So this team's going to have to smash me. Bye weeks are going to be pretty miserable. What's worth noting is in this particular build, let's just say that Deandre Swift comes back and we're kind of looking at that decision where we, we're literally pairing two wide receivers with two running backs. We're going for a really weird best ball type of play where it's all about correlation and the overall offenses being above where they're projected to be and so we get just values across the offense um in a redraft league this is a strategy this is a type of strategy the, the weird anti-correlation stacking uh at different positions this doesn't usually work in redraft if you have a shallow bench because when you have to bench so many good players you gotta obviously have players on your bench one you need a balanced bench and if you just have a lot of value but it's unbalanced it's going to lead to having to drop good players or make some trades very quickly easier in dynasty than I think it is in redraft. And so because of that, if you're in like a five bench redraft league, I think this is uh, something you actually have to consider and think um, not deeply, but think very quickly and on your feet, you know, have a heads up display. Hey, when you draft Jefferson, you know, Jones goes in about the sixth. Just know if you're in a shallow bench, you want to avoid this. Um, yeah, we're going to hyper correlate. We're going to take Deandre Swift here. Um, I can't take Rome with DJ. I can't take B Bowers and I wouldn't take him anyways. Because I, mean, I like Ridley a lot here. Uh, Kyler Murray is great if I didn't have a quarterback. It's just interesting that Kyler Murray is a nice value. Calvin Ridley is a great value there. I'm just not sure what I would be looking at at running back coming back around. ADP says my next pick, it would be right around Javante Jonathan Brooks here. Jonathan Brooks usually goes above ADP from what I've seen. Um, I don't love Javante in the eighth. I usually say a never in the eighth, but I would take him in the ninth. Um, now I'm slightly higher than consensus on Zach Moss. So I'm very fine with Zach Moss being my, my, my third. If it comes to that, it's probably what it's. And Zach Moss goes a little bit ahead as does Brooks. Yeah. ADP is not looking amazing there. So. I mean, the next best running back at ADP when it comes back around to me is. You got Eckler and then I like Warren quite a bit. Eckler's very interesting. I like Eckler a lot. It's just crazy how much I love these quarterbacks that Purdy is still on the board. Um, Kyler Murray is still on the board. And this is why I, I keep finding value at quarterback, but for the people that are really degenerate mock drafters, I think that's why the people that do a lot of mock drafts are letting quarterback fall and fall and fall because they just see every time they take a quarterback early, how much value there is later on. And they keep, passing up and being very fine with the quarterback they take later on and they push it more and more. And they're just very happy with who they end up taking um, regardless of the spot. So we're going to keep pushing it this year. Um, I, you know, I find that I just can't pass up obscene value, but is Lamar at five, five really obscene value when you can get burrow at the seven, two, when there's a chance I could probably still get Kyler Murray in the eighth round, three rounds later. So like instead of Lamar, I, who are we thinking about besides Lamar? We were definitely taking him. We were looking at Richardson. We would be looking at, 
interestingly enough, probably having to take Zay Flowers or Jaden Reed. So maybe that's why it wasn't super hard for me. I don't like that particular pocket of players, and Lamar just made more sense. So interesting. Um, but to be on the board, we're looking at the rest of the board. So after we took Aaron Jones in the sixth, it went Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, had a little bit of a run at tight end with Kittle, Ingram, and Ferguson all going off the board. Uh, like these guys, don't like him in the sixth and seventh. Notably, I would much rather have me Brian the fourth than these guys. I think there's a little bit of an upside difference there. That's that's worth them. Good value on Dak and Burrow. Hollywood Brown at the seven three Ferguson. Then we took Swift. We are on the clock. Thirty seconds. Extremely balanced team right now. Basically, a starting lineup ready to go. Top running backs: Tony Pollard. We're looking at running back or wide receiver. So we could take Tony Pollard, Javante Williams. We could go with some upside. Brian Thomas, JSN. Uh, it looks like wide receiver is probably the way to go here. I might take a shot on Brian Thomas just for some upside. This one was pretty close to me. Um, Tony Pollard, I think, is fine. He's just not a ceiling play, which is why I don't like him. Javante, again, not a ceiling play. I'm going to have to take some running backs later. I'm just I'm not going to reach for him where I don't love him. I'd rather just let Eckler fall. JSN was in contention. It was between Brian Thomas Jr., JSN, and honestly, probably Jalen Warren, but I didn't feel like reaching for a guy I could probably get on the way back. So probably JSN, Brian Thomas Jr. there is what I was looking at. Interesting to note that Tajay Spears and ADP is below Pollard, and I think Tajay might actually be the better value. Um, I think that that entire offense is going to be better than people think. I just, again, I think they're both floor, not ceiling plays, which is not exactly what I want to be doing. I already have two running backs. I mean, I am looking for some stability, so I don't have to draft a million of them. But at my RB3, I would rather have some upside. I don't want to just take a third running back that's kind of solid. Um, that's just not a winning philosophy. I want a little bit more upside. Warren goes nine, two. Um, so after the BTJ, Nick Chubb a little bit early would have taken the other running backs first, then Pollard, then Singletary, then Warren, then Javante, then Corum. So after I took BTJ and said, I'll get a running back on the way back. Every running back on the planet goes sick value at quarterback. Eckler still on the board. Some great quarterbacks. Trey Benson is notably available. We like him. We like Jamison Williams. We like Tajay Spears. We're probably taking one of them. If I look at what might come around for me, I'm just not quite sure. I'm pretty tempted to take Austin Eckler here as just I don't know what he is going to be like in Washington, but I think there's a chance that he is just straight up the best guy. Uh, we're going to change player. We're going to go Austin Eckler because it's my draft, and so I get to do what I want. And we're going to turn off auto pick because I'm talking too much. Sorry about that. The J7, in case you wanted Eckler. So I'm curious. I really want to know what you guys would do here at the 9-5. 30 second picks and trying to narrate it's uh, a bit difficult to make the best decision, the decision you would normally have made. So it's a fun exercise, though. If you guys haven't tried it, you don't want to record videos or anything like that. Still talk through your picks when you're doing a mock draft. Talk the whole time. And I highly recommend these 30 second picks. It really forces you into doubling down on um, what your gut is. You get to learn what your gut is. You get to look into why your gut's telling you that. And you also get to learn when you need to have a sixth sense for when your gut is what it is. And it's wrong. And it's usually wrong at a spot. Um, this is a spot I'm going to come back to and say, hey, just because we started heavy wide receiver, we started to then balance out. I definitely went at this pick feeling like I probably running back run here. I felt there could be a running back run over here. And there was the interesting thing is I took Eckler over Tajay over Trey Benson. Trey Benson is definitely the bigger upside pick an injury to Connor. He's through the moon just in how explosive he is. There is no reason that Trey Benson couldn't be Jameer Gibbs light to Connor's David Montgomery. And I don't think Trey Benson is being talked about enough with that sort of 
explosive upside where even with a 40% snap share, he could still do very good things. Um, so that's something to consider. I might actually like Eckler better, or sorry, I might like Trey Benson better at nine five than um, than Eckler. That being said, I'm an Eckler homer. I absolutely love him. Uh, he had a weird season last year. He's been marred by injuries, weird season, this and that. I just I think he's extremely talented, and as a veteran, his his best skill set is something that can age well. He's a veteran that is an extremely good human being. I think that goes a long way with coaches. Um, I have nothing against Brian Robinson, them going back to back. Uh, I, I just, I see this as a timeshare where the coaching staff might realize Eckler is just a savvier player when it matters. And Brian Robinson is still, still learning the game a little bit. Um, I don't know in terms of football IQ. I mean, Brian Robinson is not the athlete that Eckler at least was, but we'll see. We'll see. This was kind of a, I wanted a spicy pick that had some chance of doing some weird stuff. Um, I looked at Benson, just not enough. Benson, obviously in dynasty, I absolutely love him. I just haven't, I haven't really thought hard and fast through what is Benson? What's my true outlook for him in fantasy? What's uh, especially in redraft? What are his range of outcomes? I think the fool's gold is that he could be awesome. I think what's closer to the truth is that he'll just be a rookie that plays but I don't think he takes over the starting job this year. Uh, I think everyone thinks he could and should, but I'm not sure how realistic that is. We're back on the clock here. Uh, again, we're talking 10th round, Jordan Love, Caleb Williams, Lamar. I'm never taking you in the fifth round again. I just can't do it. I keep got I, I got to keep pushing late quarterback. We're just going to block them out with flex. We already have that. We're looking at uh, running back and wide receiver again. Um players we like here we like jameson williams quite a bit i think he could do some things have some spike weeks uh it's a condensed offense a single injury and he could be through the moon adonai mitchell too early don't want to take a second tight end just yet so i'm going to take jonathan williams um sorry jameson williams jonathan williams blast from the past there um you know there is a good chance that this range i actually really like this range for tight ends uh, I would, you know, Friar Muth would be fine on the comeback. I also don't mind Charbonnet. So Friar Muth is nice. Charbonnet is nice. I think Jacoby Myers is probably underrated from a redraft standpoint here. Maybe some Jerry Judy is a little underrated. His range of outcomes could be interesting. He's not a player that I love, but we could see some things happen. We're starting to get into the range of Dynasty players, but what's their redraft season looking like? Could be interesting. We've got some high upside. Ooh, Ricky Pearsall. Don't forget your Ricky Pearsall and your Jalen Polk. Great players. Jaleel's pretty interesting. Dottavian Wick's getting spiced up. Right now, we're just doing our go down ADP and take all the guys we like. About to be back on the clock here. Um... So at tight end, what kind of backups can we get? Um, we still like pretty much everybody, and there's a million tight ends. It's just too early to take one. So we're going to skip on Friermuth, take another player that we like. Uh, While well, there's a lot of players before we get to Jalen Polk in them, so we can take something a little bit earlier. Uh, we're planning on taking, who do we like at running back later on? Uh, ooh, we're going late at running back. We're not going to take any of these guys. Um, wow, I'm just... Hopefully we start another tight end run. Yeah, it's, uh, so so my my thought here is I'm going Friermuth because he's one of my favorite late round tight ends. I just like him. I, I like Russell Wilson likes throwing to the tight end. Friermuth was looked at as a lot better than he is. He just got associated with bad offense and suffered from it, but he never played bad. Um so I'm not saying he's going to be great, but I'm just going to lock in a backup that I like. That being said, there are a billion tight ends later that I like, so that was maybe a mistake of a pick. Um, the reason it is is because I looked down and I said, I just don't want to take Jacoby Myers here, and I don't want to take Jerry Judy here. I just look at them as later. But it is what it is. Um, we'll see. This was a, I, I plan on taking another tight end. At some point, I don't need to. I just, I typically prefer to. The reason I take a second tight end in some drafts is not because I don't think Trey McBride is going to be absolutely phenomenal. It's because 
when tight ends get injured and the landscape gets really weird, I like to sell uh, my tight end as soon as I can for some sort of value. Um, but I think given my actual build, that might have been a mistake. I really needed, I think, all these picks to build up the bench in a way that I want to. But I think it also makes sense to really have a solid tight end that I can I can hold, I can flex, I can do a lot of things with. Because in this particular build, I've got Jefferson and Jones out same week, and I've got Moore and Swift out uh, same week. I actually have to think through that statement a little bit. I, my, my whole point was I just don't want to be reaching to the waiver wire. I'm going to bench to do a lot of work. I don't want to have to drop a lot of people. But with that being said, it that actually is counterintuitive. I need a very, very solid bench running back and a very solid bench wide receiver. If anything, I need several based on the bye week situation I have there. So let's see. Uh, Jerry Judy came back. Other guys that went off the board that we liked. Jacoby Myers eventually went off the board. Xavier Leggett, I don't I don't buy the upside this year. I'm not super into it. Josh Downs, interesting. Maybe a little bit of limited ceiling. Honestly, a bunch of players that I wouldn't have drafted went off the board, so pretty happy with that. I think we like Jerry Judy, and then I can look. You know what? I'm just, at this point in time, I'm not going to make the mistake of looking at ADP too crazy. I am just going to go ahead and take Ricky Pearsall or Jalen Polk. Uh, I like them both, but S Slick Rick is, is, is my dude. I'm going to record a show later on with my good friend Phil Ruskin of the Extra Point FFB. Uh, if you haven't seen him, check out his channel. We're both extremely new to YouTube. I know our production quality is not great, but but we're building, we're learning. We just started the whole YouTube thing maybe two, three months ago. So, uh, but yeah, check him out. Extremely sharp dude, former college soccer coach uh, and, and, uh, and good buddy of mine. Extremely sharp, well-respected in the sports world. Um, and actually he's a, a staff writer for dynasty pros now as well. So congrats to you, Phil, give you a little quick shout out there. Um, so the point was, we're just going to skip ADP, all these low upside players. I mean, they're, yeah, sure. There's some guys with upside, but they're just not my favorites. And I love Ricky Pearsall. If I, you could eventually gets moved. And even if he doesn't, he's very good. And we get sniped because we were definitely going to take Jalen Polk at our next pick. We considered taking Jalen Polk at our previous pick. That's really rough. Should have done them in reverse order. I flipped it because I thought I'd get both. But Polk, I think, is doing as wide receiver one. And Ricky Pearsall is the wide receiver three. So that was a big mistake. But it's a mock draft. It happens. We're going to keep on chugging along here. And let's see what has come to us. Jaleel McLaughlin has some upside. Dante even Wick, some other things. I think we need to take our upside running back because... Late in the day, you see these big blocks of running backs just go off the board. Auto draft tends to there's just a lot of running backs available. That's at least what I found in a lot of these mock drafts. I have found that when you get late rounds, a lot of the later running backs just get pushed up. Everyone's favorite handcuff or upside in case of an injury, they just go before the wide receivers. Dynasty, it's opposite, right? All the upside wide receivers go first, and then the running backs are kind of dead. Um, so that's why I take Jaleel there. I just, I think we're probably going to see. Well, actually at this level, you know, maybe it's a little, he's probably the last upside guy. I do think he would have gone pretty quick. Uh, if we take any more, we're up to four running backs and you know, we're solid with our three. We probably need one more though. Realistically. Uh, I mean, I like the upside of Tyrone Tracy. And I think I might grab a handcuff that I can also play for straight up value in Roshan because I think Khalil gets traded or cut or something. Noticeably, I think Braylon Allen is really hot in New York. MetLife has claimed a lot of bodies. If it claims Brees, I think Braylon is going to absolutely smash. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on him. And Tyrone Tracy could definitely push for you know, a 60, 40 snap share. He could do some things. Um, I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying he's got the opportunity and a path to get there. So we're going to look at him too. Let's look at the wide receivers that we like here. Uh, the forgotten hype of Jahan Dotson. We still love him. Roman Wilson, Pittsburgh never misses. I didn't, I thought he was kind of mediocre as a player. Pittsburgh is never wrong though. And I trust them. Uh, Wicks and Douglas. I, I really, you know, I like this group of wide receivers so much more that, I mean, I like a lot of these guys in dynasty coming next. I don't like it for this season. I don't even like Bateman that much for this season. Um, 
Yeah, wide receiver falls off pretty heavily. Like there's guys I, I'm fine with, but they fall off pretty heavy. I almost guarantee to go wide receiver, probably wide receiver, wide receiver. Well, okay, last pick, Tracy or Roshan. We're going at least one wide receiver. So who do we have? One, our big three. The two young guns, well, I guess three young guns. Back on us, we're on the clock. Uh, Roman Wilson versus Wicks. We like Wicks a little bit better than Wilson there. Uh, it doesn't look like, uh, well, and then we'll see. So we're going to take, no, I did not mean to do that. That was a mistake. Uh, so I thought it was clicking Wicks, but it took Tyrone Tracy. The point was I wanted to go Dontavian Wicks and then wheel Tyrone Tracy. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe this works out perfectly. Maybe I will just get Wicks and Tracy would have gone. Uh, I doubt that is what's going to happen, though. Yeah, literally, like one of the next picks. That's uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, we could look at Malachi Corley. He could start the season as the wide receiver, too, and be an exciting player. At that. I know he's getting pushed, but I, I, I think he could win the job outright. Um, Jermaine Burton, although I just don't love his full on upside. Uh, we could go Roshan here. We could go Wandale here, but it's a mock draft. My brother went to WKU and let's have some fun. Let's uh, let's grab Malachi Corley to finish things out. Uh, but for the record, I like Wandale a lot. I think he's being hidden because of how good neighbors is. There's a chance that Wandale is basically uh, the one B uh, to um, um, to his one A. Uh, I, I do think that Wandale is the second most talented wide receiver on that team. I don't love any of the other wide receivers, and I think Wandale had a bit of a late season breakup, but the team was so bad that no one really noticed. But I like his stat line, and I watched some of those games somehow. And Wandale did look the part. He did look like he was doing things. I don't think he was the main target in the plays he got targeted. He was just the guy that found the most space. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. You know, if this were a higher stakes draft, I might not have gone Corley. He's just, you know, it's the last pick. We're going to have some fun with it. Um, so here's the draft. And I should probably link my YouTube channel real quick, just so people can uh, see what we have going on here. Anyways, uh, it's been fun. Thanks for hanging out, uh, YouTube. I appreciate it. Uh, definitely check out the channel. Look at some other videos. I have. Uh, Definitely happy with the Dynasty content I put out. We have some uh, Dynasty startup mock drafts. I'm doing some more of those. Uh, I also have a series on the best and worst picks in Dynasty startups. If you like playing Dynasty, definitely check that out. Uh, me and Phil go into pretty good detail round by round uh, in, in, a, in a fashion I think you guys would enjoy. I've got a series coming out pretty soon on the... Um, it's a debate series. It's going to be uh, players that are pretty highly contentious. Some people love them. Some people hate them. We're going to do a little fantasy court. Um, and then I should be doing part two of our um, uh, my favorite buy low, sell high uh, in Dynasty. So if you like Dynasty content, check out my channel. I've got a lot of other stuff going on there. Going forward, we're going to do lots of underdog mock drafts and lots more of these um, uh, redraft mock drafts. I cut my teeth as a redraft guy. Uh, I think... I feel like I haven't gone into these videos with 30 second picks. I only get a chance to talk about as much stuff. I talk fast. I talk a lot faster in these mocks that I'm usually used to, but I want to fit in as many takes as I can for you guys. Um, so definitely leave a comment. If you want to see a particular type of content, if you want a particular type of mock draft, hope this was fun. If you want a mock draft, uh, I'm pretty new to YouTube, which means I don't have 200,000 people that are trying to get into a mock draft, which means you can. So just drop me a message on sleeper, check in the description. If you want to mock draft with me or any of my uh, content creation partners, go check out the Get Right Fantasy Network. They're the guys that kind of took me under their wing or teach me how to do this whole YouTube thing. Uh, but they're fantastic, amazing community. And uh, with all their guys, there's mock drafts going on all the time. So if you want to be on a live stream mock draft for YouTube, have some fun, get in the chats, have people talk about your draft. We grade them on Mondays. It's a really good time. We have a mock draft competition coming out. And if you think you are the stone cold at, uh, at mock drafts, hop in, maybe win something and uh, have some clout online. Anyways, this is Kendall Vanderbilt from the fantasy football tavern. Appreciate y'all hanging out. Let's mock draft again real soon. Check out my other videos and please, please, please like and subscribe, but mostly definitely subscribe. Thank you so much. Talk to you later.